Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So the next chapter in the animatronic Farah costume saga is the chapter on shoulders. More precisely, shoulder armor. Just like the thigh armor and the massive wings themselves, I want the shoulders to have some animatronics in them as well. I've learned so much about Fusion 360 and 3D printing in general when I was working on the thigh armor parts that I decided to use similar techniques for the shoulder armor as well. I'm really proud about it. Everything is designed by me from scratch uh, based on the in-game model, so it should be as accurate as it could be, but there's a lot of my own design details to make it wearable and moving in real life and, you know, printable to begin with. So let's take a closer look and I just really want to show you all these cool design elements. I took a product design approach rather than a cosplay one, so instead of it being a single solid piece, there's a lot of different individual parts, and they're mostly held together with bolts instead of glue. Even though this took a lot of extra effort to plan the buildability of the model, uh, making sure that there's enough space for screwdrivers and what's the order of operations to put this piece together and if there's going to be clearance in this step and that step, um, this approach still offers a lot of good advantages too. If this was a solid piece, then it would mean that I would have to mask off each individual component for painting because all of them have different finishes. And yeah, that's a lot of extra work. And speaking of finishes, breaking this model down into components makes a lot of sense when you start thinking about sanding. Like all of these internal surfaces that would be really hard to reach to sand, um, they're basically impossible to sand if it's a single solid block but when they're broken apart into each individual models, then you can come in and smooth out all these little details just fine. Making everything modular also permits me to print multiple parts at once over many printers, so it speeds up the process greatly. And for broken pieces, when that eventually happens, it's easier to print one small little thing instead of printing everything anew. To make everything as tidy as possible, I made this little compartment here for the electronics inside the shoulder armor beneath this lid. So you can see the Arduino that's going to be sitting here, commanding the servo motor and the LEDs up here. So the power and the signal coming from the remote control will be going through this port up here, through this gap between the servo motor and the lid, through this little archway meant for wire management, and finally reaching the Arduino that's going to be controlling the LEDs and the servo motor. In the game we don't really see what's happening under the lid, so to make it a bit more interesting I decided to add a detail of my own design, basically to match the thigh armor parts that um, I also came up with. So it's this uh, plate with some LEDs in it. Um, it features slots for the same kind of uh, LEDs as in the thigh armor for a consistent look, and it also has a really cool channel for all the wires that are gonna be running to the LEDs for power, and uh, yeah. All of them will be tucked away neatly and wire managed. So after a bunch of days of printing and sanding and printing and sanding, I am left with this. Pretty much all of these prints here are printed on a regular 3D printer, except for these guys here. These are printed on a resin printer. Resin printers are really accurate, so parts that require a lot of precision and the perfect fit, they benefit greatly from being printed in resin. However, they're quite heavier on average than a regular filament printed part. So for weight savings, I went for filaments for bigger pieces, and for the mission critical, dimensionally sound and accurate pieces, I went with resin. Now I'm gonna do a last sanity check, uh, put everything together, make sure that all the assumptions are correct, and take it from there. So I know famous last words and everything, but everything seems to be turning out really well. I didn't add stuff like uh, the warheads and some other aesthetic parts, uh, but these structural parts seem to be fitting well, so job well done. I really hate this claustrophobic feeling of not being able to take off your costume at any given time. So for me, attaching the armor to my body is not only about how robust it sits on me, but also about how quickly I can get rid of it. That is why I came up with this. Uh, this is a quick release plate that is gonna be a part of my wing harness and is gonna be sitting on my shoulder, offering a robust connection between my body and the shoulder armor. Hopefully robust. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. 
Magnets are really good at sticking together, but even these quite powerful ones have an easy time sliding around. So the goal of this quick release plate is to uh, align two sets of magnets, one set in the plate, one set in the armor, in a non-sliding magnetic bond. So magnets perform clamping, the geometry of the plate itself prevents it from sliding around too much, and hopefully that will keep the armor in place. But when needed, I'll be able to sort of slide it along this smooth curved surface and detach it. At least that's the theory. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's almost too good. <laughs> oh man, this looks so good. Like the only motion there is is because the strap is fabric, but everything else is solid like a rock. And check this out. Uh -huh. Boom. Oh, this is so sweet. Of course, the electronics was the next concerning part that was important to get right. So I wanted to make sure everything fits and works in that regard too. Just as looks are similar to the thigh armor, electronics are too. Um, an Arduino in each shoulder is listening for commands sent from the main wing controller and performs LED light up animations and uh, servo acceleration sequences. Even before the actual weathering, I airbrushed the recessed surfaces a bit darker to make them look less plain. I think that helps the shapes pop a little bit more from afar. These three pieces are the only ones that are glued together. The inner curved surface would have been impossible to sand if it was printed as a single piece. I'm a bit annoyed that the vinyl pulled off some paint, but weathering in the end helped blur this edge. This part here provides a path for the wires to run hidden behind the servo, making sure they're not visible and also not getting pinched. Making sure everything was done in the right order took time, but in the end it all worked out. So here are my shoulders. <laughs> ah, it feels so good to be finally done. The thing that I'm really happy about is the paint job. I think it's worked out so well. All these rich colors like the reds and the yellows, they pair so well with the gray metallics and all the extra airbrushing I added to make it look a bit more three-dimensional and all the uh, weathering on the corners and in the cracks. I think it works really well. Comfort-wise, I think they're pretty good. Uh, I might be adding a bit more padding on the straps themselves or the leather pads that are visible in the reference, but overall they're not too bad, you know? Definitely better than my Doompist. <sighs> so there you have it, another big puzzle piece done. <laughs> the next major part in this already massive saga will be a video on how I redesigned my entire wing mechanism. Uh, I kind of foreshadowed it in the uh, original video. It indeed happened and I redesigned everything from scratch and it's much more powerful and much more reliable so I think you'll be curious to see what happened there. So I hope you subscribe and follow along further. Uh, but that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. <laughs> wow, what a great video, I agree. 
If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years, so here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>